How's it going, everybody? Last year, I reviewed the Countycom GP5 single sideband, meaning this is a single sideband receiver. I gave it points for its size. You know, its, it's relative battery life is, is really good. Uh, chargeable via USB mini there. All in all, pretty okay radio. Sounds good, which is arguably one of the most important things. However, however, I kind of gave it a knock on its tuning. I found the tuning difficult, and particularly on the shortwave, you ended up having to jump through different shortwave bands, get close to where you're going. So say, for instance, we wanted to go to, so if we wanted to go to 20 meters, for instance, you'd have to kind of get close and then uh, slide your way in using the wheel. And the wheel had two speeds. It had a slow fine tuning speed and then a, a fast scan or a fast speed. Uh, this worked the best when you were in FM stations, and you can see if I go slow, then I start going one by one, but if I go fast, then it, it picks up the speed. So for FM and, and medium wave, AM bandwidth broadcast stuff, pretty good. Short wave was a bit difficult. And being that it's single sideband, that's kind of where I wanted to spend my time. And being a ham, that too is where I spend most of my time. And then Mike from Countycom Corporate reached out and said, we've got a new model of this GP5 here and we'd like you to take a look at it and he sent this whole box. I opened it just to make sure that it was what I thought it was. I kind of expected a box about yay big, but I think Michael crammed this full of stuff. So we're gonna take a look at the GP5 and then whatever else is in here. So let's, uh, let's pull this all out. Okay, so if you didn't know, Countycom makes a, a lot of government products. They actually are a contractor, They've got multiple designs, designs that they either create themselves in-house or I think some of them that they, they outsource through other subcontract, that kind of stuff. I'll stop talking about it because I don't know definitively and I don't want to speak out of turn. But here's a uh, promo code if somebody wants to use this. Go ahead. Feel free. I don't have any uh, affiliation to Countycom other than they offered to send this to me. Uh, but I have bought a ton of their stuff. I'm looking at this, the pile of stuff that, that he sent. Mike sent, and I actually own this pen. <laughs> this is the Brass Embassy pen, which is really, really nice. Heavy, though. This is a chungus. I will give this away. Um, I already have this Maritac AAA flashlight. I will give this away, too. And some of these other things I haven't opened yet. This driver is new to me, so I'll try this out uh, beforehand. But, Mike, th thanks for the, the assortment of stuff. This is super, super cool. So we've got some uh, rubber cases, it looks like, for the radio. Ooh some kind of waterproof pill container. We'll hang on to that too. A little clip. So we'll put these on the side for a second. There's also a uh, nylon, ballistics nylon sheath for the, for the radio to go into your side pocket there if you want to, or go in the pocket and then clip on your belt. Is that a magnet? No, it's not a magnet. Okay. So I don't know which one. I, I think these are accessories. In fact, I'm, I'm almost positive that they are. So we'll get into those in a second. I believe this is the radio. So again, thanks to Mike for reaching out and, and wanting to send this stuff over. But let's uh, let's take a look at this radio, get it open and take a look at, at what's going on here. So this is the GP7. Okay, so they have they have incremented the numbering. It has, a, it has numbers now, guys. You can type in the frequency. That was the big thing that I felt it needed. It's got the same, looks like AM antenna, the coil antenna that slaps onto the top. A couple of earbuds, a charging cable. So they have gone to micro, it looks like. And here's one of the big upgrades that, that they did. They went to rechargeable batteries. No longer are they doing the double A's. This takes three double A's. So they're going to rechargeables. And it looks like I can just, oh, it's a, it's a handle to pull it up. Okay, I'll hang on to that for a second. Okay, the clip is attached. There is also a little belt pouch that comes inside. We'll leave this stuff in. This antenna, uh, this AM antenna is actually really good though, so don't, don't lose this. They do sell replacements if you lose them, but um, I know because I believe I bought one. <laughs> or I had to wait for another radio to have one um, for me to, you know what, let me take this off so you get the full, let's get the full dimensions on this bad boy. So the speaker has been moved. It looks roughly the same. Volume is a bigger. The GP5 had a potentiometer for volume. The GP7 has a rotary encoder as there are some controls that it handles outside volume. These are both the same. Micro versus mini. This also takes five volts, this takes five volts. The backside here, similar general purpose government products, general purpose world receiver. So this is FM, medium wave, short wave, and alarm clock. 
This is FM, AM medium wave, long wave, and short wave. So it might have picked up some frequencies. We'll check that in a little bit. Okay, battery pops in just like that. No idea if this bat. Oh, the battery's charged. Okay. Clock face is a bit different. Looks like it's a bit smaller here versus this guy. And 10 on the top is a little bit different. The little uh, holder piece, the piece you pull out, is a bit, a bit smaller in the new one. Same looking screen. You've got the DBU and the DB values displayed there. Let's find a station where we've got relative uh, relative activity. Looks like similar buttons, time, display, alarm are all there on the same side. We do have upper sideband buttons, which is what used to be over here with this little green, the little green button there. The little zombie green button now has its own dedicated upper and lower sideband, and there's a sync button as well, so that's interesting. We'll, we'll check that out. And there's an ETM button, now its own, a uh, little bit bigger than it was before, and you can see that the control space is actually much, much bigger between it so let's uh let's hop over let's see if we can so now we are advertising a long wave medium wave antenna versus am antenna as it was in the past pull out the aerial here and i'll do a scan oh aerial link looks a bit different too hold on here yes the uh the aerial on the gp5 is shorter than the gp7 so let's there's the end of the GP5, and there's the end of the GP7, so much, much longer. Let's do a scan. All right, I'm running ETM. Let it do its thing. I will note, too, that the uh, GP7 is much lighter feeling because there's batteries in the GP5 versus this GP7. Okay, we've executed a ETM scan. It's found a gang of stations already. You can see 40-something that it's flowing through right there. So we'll be able to do that. We'll do that here as well. Okay, so those of you who don't know what I'm doing right now, I have the uh, output of the radio into a recorder, which I'm also listening to, so I can hear um, the audio that's coming out of the radio. Now, I am kind of uh, putting this in a bad light. Let me stand it up a little bit more vertically. Pretty good. Let's go to medium wave. And we'll do a medium wave scan on ETM. Now, I, I don't have the AM antenna in. We're just using the, uh, the stick antenna or whatever bar may be inside. In fact, let me, let me lower this. Check this out. We'll, we'll clip on the medium wave antenna. So by the way, 640 is always a slam dunk for any, any radio because this is literally the, <laughs> this is literally the station that's three miles from my house. <laughs> So it's 89, 84, 85 dBm. Not bad. All right. So let's... What's going on in long wave? Okay, I'm gonna leave this. We're gonna leave this in there. I know this isn't gonna work for that, but we're gonna do a scan. Nothing. No. Okay. All right, let's go up to short wave. We're in short wave right now. Okay, 10,000 kilohertz is where we expect to find WWV. I'm pretty sure that this won't work. This antenna port is not for short wave, but um, I'm gonna try. And then if that doesn't work, we'll, we'll clip on to, uh, to the aerial here. All right, check out this connector. It's an SO239 to 3.5 millimeter mono jack. I don't think this is gonna work, but we'll see. Oh. It does. Interesting, so this is labeled long wave, medium wave, but... Um... Oh, interesting. Now I have to know if this one did that and I just didn't know about it. Mm. 
No. Okay, you have to hear this. Uh, I guess it does a bit. Oh, wow, what a comparison. Can you hear the other stations bleeding over? We're getting a lot of bleed over on WWV. Well, oh, this is really interesting. Okay, let me let me switch back. Oh, the bleed over's there a little bit. Now, <laughs> I would like to point out this is partially because that AM station that is three miles from my house that I said that I was talking about, this is the station. It's that strong. Which I think, no, it's not going through my filter. Uh, it's a bummer. I have an, uh, I have a AM radio station filter, but it's, cor it's connected directly to the back of my uh, ICOM 7610. This would, this would have less of a problem if we were able to avoid that. Anyway, onward. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Clear out of that. There we go. So we'll put it into lower sideband. Now, how do I get over there? Picking this up. K9, we were picking him up just on the open radio. That's pretty cool. All right, we got that step button. There we go. Now I can fine tune, which we couldn't do on this one. Let's do the test. I'll take it up to six and then we'll, we'll do a switch step up. It leaves it at the six. Okay. Curious. Let's see who's on 20 meters. Contest is over. Everybody's like, I'm out of here. It's switched to upper sideband. That's nice. Let's for funsies, let's go down. And if we set our filtering low, interesting. Okay, that didn't work before. So now, okay, we have a 500 Hertz filter. Now uh, we're jumping into uh, territory for FT8 right there. So we'll, we'll slide out of there. I was hoping to find some CW. We'll go down to 40, we'll go back to 40 meters. It looks like that was a little bit more active anyway. Nice. Okay, so you can drop the filter down, which I don't think we could do that on this one. We couldn't. Yeah, AM bandwidth here, so if I... There's a 1.2. You start losing it. We'll bring it down to 500. Cool! That's... That's pretty good. Let's let's do an A B comparison. So let's let's go back up to the voice portion, and we'll swap the mics again, and or the uh, the audio there, so you can hear the difference. So we'll we'll take this back up, and we'll get back up to voice. No, oh, sorry, that should have been three. There you go.
Let's see if he can hear it. That's a very AM filter that's on this. It's wider. Okay. Pretty similar. This sounds a bit better, but that also is probably because I've got the bandwidth control, which I, I'm I'm pretty sure this doesn't. And I know it says it's got this different capabilities, but I always had trouble accessing this stuff. It was like it was it was screen printed, but it didn't actually have the capability. So like step control, for instance, th this didn't work, if I remember correctly, on the GP5. Here is the audio off the speaker. One on one. one, one. Okay, walang problema. Ayos. At pogi-pogi, as usual, yung boses mo, ikaw na ikaw, mga bino ba? Okay, you are, sir. Now, obviously, this is uh, this is the volume output with the filtering on and running lower sideband. You're going to get different effect, different quality if you're running AM, broadcast, FM, etc. Okay, let's take a look at some of these other accessories that, that was sent to me. Thanks again, Mike, and, and all the folks at Countycom. As far as uh, capabilities go, this is a fine little uh, long wave, medium wave, short wave, and FM um, receiver. Uh, don't expect weather. It, it doesn't go that high into the weather frequencies, but for everything else, this is a nice little package. It's lightweight because of the uh, rechargeable batteries now. Let's take a look at what else we got there. Okay, this is the battery charger. They have an extra, an external battery charger you can pick up. Battery charger. So this guy, how this works, these pins. Yeah, look at this, this is, they move. Um, <laughs> so careful with this one because what you're gonna do, see how it says positive and, and negative there? So you're gonna slide this guy. What? There we go. You're gonna slide this guy in and there you go. That's uh, showing you the battery reading. It's kind of cool. It's a, it's a universal charger, if you will, that you can you can plug these batteries into it. So you always be topped off, and it takes a takes a 110 there. So there's a, how that works. Okay, got a uh, <laughs> glow in the dark. I think this is glow in the dark. Little rubber bumper that the radio goes into. Nice. This does have a tendency to sometimes like fall over when it's, you know, because it's kind of top heavy. So this is nice to have. Orange one as well to go along with that. I think, <laughs> I saw this on their website and I, I thought this was pretty cool. This is a, a, I think this is the snap on case for this. It is the snap on case. Okay, so this is. Okay, it flips up. So if anybody, <laughs> any of you get this, it just, it flips up. This should hinge open. Yes, hinge. Sorta. I don't wanna force anything. <laughs> Cause these are pretty squared off edges. So let's see if we can just take this guy Okay, I feel like I'm forcing. <laughs> it definitely looks like it's pinned. So the, these edges are all pinned. It's like it's pinned together, pinned, pinned, and pinned. I kind of thought this would like hinge open, but I don't think that's the case. All right, uh, before I break anything, I am going to consult the, the internet. All right, I just went ahead and did it. <laughs> I went ahead and did it and kind of manhandled this open a little bit and it, it didn't do any damage, so, so we're okay. 
Um, I, I got some confidence after looking at County Com's YouTube page, which they're on YouTube, right? So let's let's slide this in. Okay. Do a little tappy tap. Wait. Yeah, if you did it right, Josh. That, there you go. The controls got to be on the side that you can actually use them. Do a little tappy tap. Okay. In. Hey, not bad. That's pretty good. Okay, cool. Now you, you have to remove the the radio if you want to replace the batteries or anything like that. But but you'd have to do the same if you were using the glow in the dark, or the orange, uh, the rubber the rubber um, squishy case. Okay, boy, um, there is there are more features here than in its uh, its predecessor, the GP5. There's a couple of things I want to hit up here that I think are going to be really interesting for the amateur radio users. A lot of times, you know, when when you look at when you look at shortwave listening radios, they uh, appeal more towards shortwave listeners, which are going to be broadcast shortwave bands. Generally, you'll find, and you know, again, go to go to swling.com. I'll put a link in the description to Thomas's website. A lot of times, radios like these will favor being good medium wave listeners or good shortwave listeners, or they'll kind of be okay at both, but. There's not really like a spectacular listener across the board. For amateur radio listeners, however, there are some features that we look for that we may not really care as much at, from a shortwave listener point of view. Looking at these two radios, it's clear to me that this is a bit more effective for amateur radio listening. By adding the bandwidth capability to where you can go all the way down to listening to CW and increase it up to, you know, people who are using you know, multi, like 5K plus audio. There's guys that do that on amateur radio. But regardless, this does, what is it, 2.5 to, to 3 kilohertz is what you generally want for single sideband. Plus the ability to change the step on the fly using the button here. Really, really handy. Just those two things alone make this way easier to use from an amateur radio standpoint. Obviously, the keypad for entry for frequencies is much preferred over the simple uh, change bands. And again, the bands that this went to when you would go through the shortwave bands were going to be the shortwave broadcast bands versus this is going to take you through the amateur bands as well. So right there, boom, you're in 80, right? Now you're in 40 meters, 20 meters, or that's about outside. There's, there's 20 meters. There you go. And uh, 18, 15, and you get the idea all the way down. We'll maybe check out 10 meters if it was a little bit earlier in the day. Uh, regardless, this is a this is a much better feature set packed radio for amateur radio listeners. If you are interested in that kind of thing and also still want medium wave uh, FM, again medium wave AM broadcast and FM broadcast, this is a, a good radio and still give you the capability for shortwave listening as well. I'm going to put the antenna back in here. I'm going to put the antenna back in. Oh, you know what? It's got to come out of the case. My antenna connector doesn't fit with this case. The last couple of things I'll, I'll show you as we as we wrap up here. Uh, one of th there, there's a couple of, of interesting ways, and, and we're going to go tight on this one so you can see this. So there's a couple of interesting ways you get the the, the scanning features that you would expect from uh, from a shortwave radio. So let's let's go down to something you're actually going to be able to hear something on. So we've got somebody talking right there. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you hit the VF VM button, which VF VM variable frequency and um, variable memory, think of frequency oscillator or VFO versus your memory channels. So it's still in scanning. Let's let's take it out of that for a second. Uh, ATS is automatic tune selection, right? Is that right? <laughs> automatic tuning storage. You've got left and right buttons. The right button will take you through the band you're in. So let's let's go back down. So let's take the step. We'll go, you know what, we'll just do it the manual way. Okay. If we go to the right side, it will scan it within the band and add to your memory channels, filling them up. If you go left side, it'll start scanning the entire amateur radio, or I'm sorry, it'll it'll scan all the shortwave and amateur radio bands and refresh, redo all of the frequencies that you have uh, loaded in the radio. You could want to do this. You may not want to do this. This is more of a brute force scanning method. The other thing this has is ETM, which is enhanced tuning mode. In ETM mode, this works a bit different. 
So if I wanted to do upper sideband or lower sideband, so let's let's get into lower sideband. So I'm I'm pulling out somebody talking, whatever. If I try and hold down ETM, it's gonna say, no, 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 we don't we don't do that. There we go. Is it doing it? I didn't expect this. <laughs> I didn't expect this. Okay. Okay, sure. Well, okay, where I was going with this is ETM enhanced tuning mode is just like ATS or, or similar to ATS. But what ETM is going to do is it's going to add the memory channels into a specific set of pages or groups, memory groups. You can then go through those groups at any time and pull pull up whatever ETM had heard. So it's almost like its own memory recall method. You have the standard memory channels, but then you also have the ETM memory channels that you can pull from if you want to. This is handy in this case because the enhanced tuning memories will actually be based off of the time and days. It's actually really useful to run the ETM every time you sit down and it'll figure out where it's at by what you set the time to on the radio to figure out where to put the slot or where to put the memory that it's hearing. And let me be as accurate as possible. They actually have six memory time specific memory group. If you perform an ETM memory scan at 1135, it'll fall between 10 and 1359. So it'll get stored into 1031. Okay, so this is actually kind of handy depending on which frequencies you go to because as we know, some frequencies change throughout a given 24 hour period. That's kind of cool, smart idea. So after clicking the ETM button, you enter into ETM mode and you will scroll through the frequencies that it picked up when it did its scan. Note that, you know, you know me, I've got a lot of RFI. Well, I can pick up a lot of stations. I do pick up a high level noise floor. So sometimes ETM is tricked by that and you'll see that's actually a good station. But it picks up noise too. And that's something you can expect to see. Lots of Christian talk, you can expect that. Now, generally, uh, you know, things to keep in mind when you're using ETM. So if you go back to, let's go to medium wave. And we've already got stations picked up there. Okay, great. Let's go to FM. So we'll, we'll do an ETM again, hold it down. And it, it'll go through FM really quick because FM's not that big of a band. And you can see the numbers incrementing there. Folk Art Museum, Pacific Asia Museum, wow. and many more. I, you can get... One of our big holdouts is Kepler 452. Uh... And here's the station I listen to more than anything. KUSC, classical music. Also a good radio test. I don't know why. It's always... Stuff coming out of here sounds really good. Uh, wow, yeah, okay. Let me, uh, let me pull back a step and, and give you my thoughts on this. I, uh, I think this is now a, a much more attractive radio for amateur radio listeners. Folks who like to listen to amateur radio frequencies. On all the bands, you, you can attach your own antenna if you want to. Uh, you can also do the clip job. You know that one where you got the little clip that goes to your aerial outdoors. It's got a longer aerial, so that'll help a bit. But, you know, stock aerials are hit and miss to begin with. I think it is a vast improvement over its little brother, the GP5. This is more of a broadcast radio listener. This is more of a, a feature-rich general coverage receiver, I would call this. I, I think this is, a, a, like I said, a, a, much, a much more attractive unit for amateur radio operators with, again, its filtering, its step control. It's slightly more sensitive than the GP5, at least from that quick test we did, that audio comparison. Speaker sounds just as good as it did before. It's a decent sized speaker, and the audio coming out of this sounds really good as well. All in all, I, I think that these are... Uh, a nice little piece of kit. This might be something that you do put in a, a bug out bag or get home bag, add, you know, one of the silicone sleeves or something like that to it. Consider the, uh, I'm already charging the battery. <laughs> I plugged that into the wall. I'm already using this. Um, <laughs> consider packing this along too for extended listening if you needed to do that. Yeah, it, it's a, uh, it, it's a, uh, yeah, this is gonna be a day, I'm gonna start daily driving this because what I can't tell you right now is how long these batteries last. I can tell you that the, the GP5's batteries lasted me 
uh, generally about three days of heavy use if I was listening all the time in the office. Um, and it would, li it would last me lo much longer than that if it just lived in my backpack and standby. I'm curious how long the batteries last on this when just sitting in the radio. Is it going to last a really long time? Is it something that's going to be reliable? I appreciate that this is pretty easy to, to charge. You've also got USB. I don't know if that's, is that USB out? Let's test that. So it, it is outputting 3.23 volts. So this is actually a, a multi-use item here. This little charger, you can charge USB rechargeable devices off of this. I think, I think that's right. Yeah, because this is the output. This is the input, and there's your output side. Well, shoot, now I gotta test that. Here is my fantastic uh, XP2 Pro Bluetooth USB DAC uh, digital audio converter for listening to music and other stuff. We'll talk about something like this in the future because I think this has ham radio value. But anyway, USB-C to USB-A. Charges, cool, multi-use tool. So you could actually keep these batteries, all that stuff, and you could charge other devices on it if you had to. I mean, this is, this is like no power in here, but, but still. So what's all this gonna cost you? Well, the GP7 on County Comp's website is $95. If you wanna get it gov packed or packed in a, you know, I don't know, water resistant pouch or whatnot, that's gonna cost you $129. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is. Oh, you know what? This is sold out. The only way to get it right now is $130, uh, but then you get the gov pack. If you want something like the hinged frame, that's $35. The battery chargers, $15. That's not bad with two batteries. They sell replacement aerials. They sell replacement uh, AM. See, I already lost that. There it is, that AM antenna. The little nylon pack is 20 bucks. I think we'll test this in a second too. The hockey puck, as they call it, is six, uh, 1650 and the little silicone sleeves are 750 So not bad. That's, um, there's, there's a lot there. That's, yeah, that's pretty good. They also have the coil or wire uh, reel antenna, which I believe is a Texan style. Yeah, this is very reminiscent of the Texan style. This is uh, 1395 for the coil, um, for the reel up coil. Glow in the dark. Oh, the glow in the dark is sold out. Eight ninety five. I've got two of these. Maybe we'll do. Maybe we'll do a giveaway with this too. I don't know. If I want to give away glow in the dark though. Maybe I'll just give away the orange. This is pretty cool. I love glow in the dark stuff. As a kid of the eighties, glow in the dark was where it's at. And there's the nylon enclosure for this. Now I had remembered that they had one that you could put the AM antenna around here somewhere. I don't know if that's still a thing. Somebody I think cooked that up online. I bet you there's a ton of three D print stuff that you could do two for the GP5s and GP7s now, because they're probably the same dimensions. That would be a lot of fun. There's probably a lot of cool stuff you can do um, just as an accessory point of view. There's slapping that radio back in there. That's gonna stay like that for a little while. All right, look forward to some probably future video where I talk about battery life, usable battery life, because I think uh, that would be the only thing that could take away from the enhancements that this radio has over the GP5. More of a, a shortwave listeners radio, GP5, GP7, something that amateurs and shortwave listeners alike should probably look to. This is a good radio, at least from my short first time thoughts in looking at this. Guys, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching. Click that bell, click subscribe if you haven't done so, and give me a thumbs up, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your support. Take it easy.